Introducing YouTube memberships, a fun way to support the channel while getting some exclusive perks. Click the join button to become a member now and get benefits like badges next to your name on videos, behind the scenes photos, advantages during the live trivia game, discounts on merchandise, private one-on-one -on -one video chats, the ability to request future video topics, and exclusive 8-10 to 10 minute videos on the history of the NFL. And now, on with our feature presentation. This is the first time I've ever said this. I'm out on Mike Vrabel. I used to think that Vrabel was a heck of a coach, and I hated the fact that he was in the AFC South leading the Titans. Because not only was he great at doing more with less, but he had some great awareness for the situations at hand. He was on the forefront of the revolution of going for two up by seven points in the fourth quarter to make it a nine-point game, which I am 100% behind. His coaching and chess match in overtime against the Philadelphia Eagles in 2018 was nothing short of masterful, and his manipulation of the rules in the wild card game against the Patriots was brilliant. But this season in particular, it feels like everything has fallen off of a cliff. It started early, when in week one against the New Orleans Saints, he kicked a field goal down by four points with two minutes left. Because that didn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. You can learn more about that by clicking the card in the upper right corner. And now, you had whatever the heck happened last night in their 20-16 loss in front of a national audience on Thursday Night Football to the Pittsburgh Steelers that officially put a massive dent in their playoff chances. By itself, none of these decisions rose to the level of a dumb decision. But it's as though every single decision that Vrabel made late in the half at a clutch situation was the wrong one when it came to managing the clock, where it was like he almost went out of his way to make life as difficult as possible for his team. He contradicted himself with how he called his own game, and didn't seem to know what he wanted to do, making things up as he went along with no real rhyme or reason and no philosophy. And you'll see what I mean as we break down this game because there were three absolutely head-scratching decisions that he made throughout the contest in clutch spots that we need to talk about that didn't seem to make a whole lot of sense when you think about it for more than a few seconds. The first mistake that he made came with two minutes left in the second quarter. Here's the situation. The Steelers have second and goal at the eight-yard line, so obviously, time is not an issue whatsoever for the Steelers. They're going to score on this drive barring something crazy. And unless there's a penalty or whatnot, they only have two more plays max before a change of possession is guaranteed to happen, either because of a field goal attempt, a touchdown, or a failed conversion on fourth down. If you're the Titans, knowing that this is the final sequence of events for the Steelers possible on this drive, as they physically cannot get another first down, you've got to be thinking a few steps ahead. You've got to be thinking about what happens when you get the ball back, and ideally, how many plays you've got at your disposal. You want to be able to have as much time as possible to get the ball back and mount a drive, while also being able to comfortably use the middle of the field and maybe even not be so one-dimensional when having to call passes. And on second down, after Kenny Pickett completes a two-yard pass to George Pickens, this is a perfect time for the Titans to call one of their three timeouts. This is a perfect time for them to stop the clock, knowing that the Steelers only have one more play before they're guaranteed to give the ball back to the Titans, and the clock automatically stops after the fourth down play. And instead, for some inexplicable reason, the Titans do not call a timeout, and decide to let the clock run out. Instead of the Steelers calling this third down play with 153, the Steelers are now potentially calling this play with 113 left on the clock. Pittsburgh has no problem taking the clock down because that is a huge difference. If they call the play with 153, let's say you hold them to a field goal by getting a stop on third down, and each play takes six seconds. That means that the Steelers are kicking off to you with 141 or so left on the clock, which is plenty of time to do something and run a high tempo but fairly normal offense, especially when you have timeouts. But now, by not calling this timeout, you're only getting the ball back with under a minute left on the clock, which is not a lot of time to do something, especially if you have a rookie quarterback who might not be the most comfortable yet with a no-huddle offense. You just greatly hinder your team's chances of getting points on the drive and retaking the lead going into the halftime break. 
all because you completely mismanaged the clock. Now, instead of having about 13 to 14 plays to move the ball down the field and get into field goal range, and instead of having your whole playbook available to you, you have about half that many plays at half the time, all while being forced with a rookie quarterback, mind you, to throw the ball if you want to get something going. I guess you could make the argument that you don't want to give the Steelers the ball with too much time to do anything if you fail to score on your drive and have a quick three and out. But let's be real here. Why would you think that? Number one, you can't play scared like that, especially when you hadn't gotten three and out yet all game. You hadn't turned the ball over, and you were moving the ball fairly easily against Pittsburgh's defense, including on the last drive. Number two, even in the worst case scenario, where let's say you can't get much of anything going, and you're giving it back to Pittsburgh with about a minute left on the clock, your punter is Ryan Stonehouse, as in one of the top punters in football, and the guy who literally set the record last season for highest yards per punt average. The guy boomed his first punt 59 yards to the five yard line. He can flip the field as well as anyone. Odds are, even if he can't do anything, Stonehouse is just going to pin the Steelers inside the 20 anyways, and the Steelers probably just go into the half knowing them. So you truly have nothing to lose here. Don't you want more chances to score? Isn't the whole purpose of the game to score more points from the opposition? Then why would you give yourself more time to score? The only reason this decision didn't backfire spectacularly on Tennessee is because as the play clock was midway through, and the game clock was winding down because Rabel refused to call a timeout, the clock ended up stopping, because the Steelers got hit with a penalty for too many men in the huddle. Pittsburgh bailed Tennessee out big time, because that clock stoppage, through their own fault, ended up giving the Titans enough time to make this a non-issue. But still, you have to be aware of the clock there, and it didn't seem like Vrabel was in the slightest bit, because otherwise, he would have called a timeout right away. But we're not done yet with the first half, because that takes us to the second mistake that Vrabel made, which was whatever the heck this play was on third and ten. Not that time, forcing him to the inside. Going to keep it on the ground here, so they're going to settle for the three, apparently, as Spears gets stopped. Again, you've got the ball at the 19-yard line, and there's 25 seconds left. Plus, you have a timeout. There is no reason you can't get 10 yards in a first down and then have some shots at the end zone. Any possible reason you can think of for not wanting to try an actual play here, instead of surrendering and waving the white flag, doesn't apply here at all. Scared of turning the ball over? Will Levis has zero turnovers in this scheme, and has not thrown a pick throughout his entire career thus far. Scared of taking a sack to get out of field goal range? Even if the sack is 8 yards, it moves it from a 37-yard field goal to a 45-yard field goal which is still a chip shot for a guy like Nick Folk, who is a seasoned veteran and who has not missed yet this year. Scared of stopping the clock and Pittsburgh too much time to get the ball back and mount a drive of their own? Well, that's just stupid, because they would get it back with about 11 seconds left, so you know they're not doing anything but just taking a knee. This conservative play calling in that spot just didn't seem to make any sense, because it says, we have no faith in our quarterback to not turn the ball over. Which in that case, why is he in the game? And why did you trust him to drive you down the field this far? You don't even need to take a shot at the end zone here. You just need 10 yards to get a first down and then bring up first and goal. And Levis had picked up 10 plus yards on multiple plays on the drive already. It just seems odd that between the lack of a timeout earlier in the quarter and the play calling here on the third down, that the Titans seem destined to take the game out of the hands of Will Levis despite there not being a real reason to do so. Even after the game, Vrabel spoke on that decision and said, I felt like we needed to secure points right there. We've been through this before. Had other opportunities at 3rd and 10 down there where there is not a whole lot of space. And again, I just felt like getting the points right there was critical. And if we bust a run and they are back, great, we break one. Just didn't figure that a pass was good for us. But again, Barring anything insane, you already had points. You have a timeout. You're in easy field goal range even with a loss of yardage. 
You're not going to show any faith in your team and try and get more points? Just a bit odd. You had faith to lead you down the field with basically not a lot of time left because you didn't call a timeout earlier, but you don't have enough faith in them to get 10 yards even though they've done it already. Just very contradictory. But the first half wasn't the only place where Vrabel screwed up. Because when it came to the second half and the end of that one, oh man, we need to talk about his clock management at the end on that penultimate drive. Never mind the fact that the Titans went four and out thanks to calling three straight runs to bring a fourth down, completely taking it out of the hand of Will Levis until it was too late. And never mind the fact that on fourth down, the second read on the play when Hopkins wasn't open was a fly route for Burks 40 yards down the field. By the time this drive started, there was 3.56 on the clock. Despite not picking up the first down and calling four plays, by the time it ended, there was 2.06 left. The clock management here was brutal. The Titans were wasting clock and were burning as much time as possible. Even though if they did not get a first down, they would leave themselves basically no room to win this game barring something crazy. And to me, this was just asinine. It was like the Titans were worried about trying to score, but not trying to leave too much time on the clock for the Steelers to get the ball last and have a good drive of their own. Which, I don't even know how you can think like that on a drive that's starting your own territory with over four minutes left and with the Steelers having all of their timeouts. So the clock would likely not be an issue for them. It's like they put the cart before the horse. If you get down inside the 20 yard line and it's past the two minute warning, and it's extremely likely that this will be the last real drive of the game? Yes, worry about the clock and not trying to score too quickly. But you thought about that way too early, because to think like that in your own territory with four minutes left at the very start of the drive, thereby giving yourself no room to mess up at all? I don't know. I just don't know. At the end of the day, if you're the Titans, you want to give yourself a backup plan just in case this fails especially since you've only scored one touchdown so far this game. Let's say you call that sequence of events, and it doesn't work out. But you don't take the play clock down all the way to zero, and you don't show any lack of urgency at all. Now, the Steelers get the ball with about three minutes left in the game. Because you have all of your timeouts, this gives you two things. Number one, it allows you to have some room for error defensively, where if you allow a first down, the game is not necessarily over. But number two, if you do get that defensive stop quickly, you're getting the ball back with over two minutes left and a two minute warning is a built in timeout, or with just under two minutes left and basically all of your timeouts left. Compare that to this, where you have to be flawless defensively, and even if you are flawless, you're going to have just about none of your timeouts seeing so you to go the length of the field with a rookie quarterback, and I just don't get it. The risk does not outweigh the reward here. Sure, scoring a touchdown and leaving no time for the Steelers to have a drive of their own would be the ultimate goal. But to think like that and kill the clock to your own hindrance when you haven't even gotten a first down yet, and you have four more first and ten sequences to try that strategy when it actually might make a look of sense? It's like thinking about hitting a grand slam with the bases empty. Never mind the fact that the play calls themselves were abysmal because that's not on Vrabel, and instead, that's on their offensive coordinator. The clock management there and the lack of urgency was abysmal, and it may have cost Tennessee the game, because when the Titans got the ball back, even though Will Levis did his best to drive them down the field, he had to take some shots to the end zone late, because there were no timeouts and the clock was nearing zero. Versus if the clock management on the penultimate drive was better, he probably can check down some passes, and not have to try for the home run shot late in the game that ended up resulting in an interception. With the rookie quarterback, who you already showed based on your decisions in the first half that you don't necessarily trust, why make life harder for him? Why give him and your defense no room for error at all? Show some urgency on that second to last drive, and if you score, which should be your primary and quite frankly, your only focus is the drive is starting and you still need 50 yards, great. If not, at least you have time on the clock to do something if your defense gets a stop. Instead, you got, well, whatever the heck happened in this game. 
where you had a two minute drive that made life insanely difficult for your team going forward when it really could have been done in half the time. In a three point game or a two point game or something like that, where a field goal gets the job done and you only need one first down to get into that range, I get it. Trust me, I get it. But when you're down by four and need a touchdown and have to drive 50 plus yards and need to get about five first downs and you barely even gotten anything going? Nope, not one bit, not at all. This is really the first time all season I can say this about the Titans. Mike Vrabel, through his cumulative coaching decisions, costs his team this scheme right here between these two teams behind me. The conservative nature of how he handled everything backfired in such a big and predictable way. The timeout management at the end of the first half that almost cost the Titans a scoring chance if not for the fact that the Steelers committed a penalty of their own and stopped the clock, thereby bailing the Titans out. The end of the half play calling that may have cost the Titans a chance at four more points in a game that they lost by four, because it didn't trust their quarterback, and instead, they ran the ball on third and ten. The clock-churning penultimate drive that made life way more difficult for the Titans going forward than it had to be, for really no reason at all. The Titans might finally have their quarterback, even though it's early. But for the first time, I'm really starting to wonder if the Titans have their coach. By themselves, none of these decisions really rise to the level of a dumb decision. And the Titans didn't lose this game because of one call. Rather, they lost this one by death of a thousand paper cuts. But the in-game management skills of Mike Vrabel this year have seemingly fallen off a cliff in so many ways. It's like every move he made when it came to managing the clock and managing the flow of the game at big moments was the exact wrong one, and not even from hindsight bias. It's like he doesn't trust anyone on his offense based on the third and ten call, but is evidenced by the clock at the end of the first and second half, wants to make it as tough as possible for them to score, and to have as few chances to do so with no breathing room at all. The strategy just contradicts itself. Mike Vrabel's game plan was so inconsistent, and last night, it was a walking contradiction. And man, did it show in the box score. Because when you break it down, Mike Vrabel coached an absolutely horrible game. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe, as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL Trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.